Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bratcher and I wanted to kind of talk with you a little bit and show you a quick video of something that I worked on. It may be helpful as we head into your final, final, finals. Okay, um, this is a program I call Wild Loop of Palooza. I call it Wild Loop of Palooza because it's a bunch of while loops. Instead of using Intel commands, we're using while loops. This may really, really, really help you on your final coding project. Um, and if I haven't said it before, this may really help you on your final coding project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the program. We're going to download it and I'll, and I'll demonstrate it, how it works. Okay. First thing is pseudocode. Make sure you always have pseudocode. Pseudocode is critical for explaining to the other users why you're doing things. Okay. Now, if we go into this area here, task main, we create the first while loop and it's the one equals one. It's the never ending program. So anything in here, one always equals one. So it's always going to loop. It's going to loop within this big while loop. Okay. And there's our first open bracket. I've got a wait command in here and you'll see why I have that later. But at the end of it, I reset with a bump switch. And with that wait command in there, it waits to make sure I don't have bump switch bounce. And that's, that's why I've got that marked annotated delay for bump switch bounce. Okay. So in this area, in this area here, I have my first while loop. And I'm waiting for somebody to hit the bump switch. While it's, the bump switch is reading zero, it's doing nothing. It's just cycling. Waits 10 seconds, 10, 10 milliseconds, bump switch. 10 milliseconds, bump switch. Once I hit the bump switch, it's going to move to the next while loop. And again, I have a little wait command in there. So I'm making sure that the time it takes for my bump switch to be pressed and released doesn't skip a beat. Okay. In this loop, with another bump switch wait command, I'm using my line follower to sense the light. If it's greater than 3000, I'm going to have maximum power in my flashlight. If it's greater than 1500 but less than 3000, I'm going to about to be about a third of or a fourth of my power. And if I go below 50 on my line follower, I'm flashing on and off one second intervals. Okay. So that's my first bump switch switch. The second time I hit the bump switch, it's going to loop out into this area. Okay. I'm basically spinning my servo back and forth and turning the flashlight on. Okay. I'm setting the servo, turning the flashlight on, setting the servo. I'm, I'm blinking the flashlight, setting the servo. Okay. And again, I'm using the bump switch as an Intel command. Once I hit that bump switch the last time, it gets out of here and goes back to the top and waits for the bump switch again. So let's compile. Let's download. Okay, and let's start the program. Start the program. Okay, it's waiting. It's waiting. Notice my line follower value is greater than 3000. I'm going to hit my bump switch. You can see my flashlight right here. My flashlight right here on your video is at full brightness. If I get a little closer to it, it dims. I cover it up. See how it goes into that flash mode. I lift it, goes back up. Okay, I'm gonna hit the bump switch again. Now it's going cray cray. Now it's going cray cray. The bump switch sent it to the second feature. I've hit the bump switch again. Went to back to the top of the program, waiting for me to hit the bump switch again. 
okay? Any questions on that, just let me know. I can show you the program, show you how it works. Uh, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this shows you while loops and hopefully you pay attention to this because you may see something like this as part of an examination. Take care. Bye-bye.